Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. My name is C. Tobejane, and in today's topic, we'll be looking at electrical trade theory N2 under the topic of reticulation network, which I believe is chapter three of your module. What is a reticulation network? This is something that we need to understand first. But before that, remember that electrical engineering deals specifically with the distribution and generation and also transmission of electricity. Here, we look details of how we get electricity in our household and how that electricity is being manufactured. Now, reticulation network or electricity reticulation means the trading or distribution of electricity and includes all associated services. An electricity distribution system means a power system that operates at or below 132,000 volts. This means that upon the generation of electricity, electricity needs to be stepped up or the voltage has to be stepped up to 132,000 volts. But what is this that we speak of? Now, let us look at the stages that are consistent in this electricity or in this electrical network. One, we have the electrical generation, the transmission, and the distribution. With electrical generation here, we generate electricity from fossil fuel, nuclear power plants, hydropower plants, excluding pump storage, geothermal system, solar panel, biofuel, wind, and etc. This may include electricity produced in electricity-only plants and in combined heat and power plants. Now, what does this mean? It means that there are many ways of manufacturing electricity. The traditional method of manufacturing electricity is with the ESCOM power generation, where we use coal and water. But the other forms are when you use solar panels and we also use windmills, which are commonly known. These forms also are able to create electricity. But after electricity has been manufactured or generated, that type of electricity has to be transmitted. Now, electric power transmission is the bulk transfer of electrical energy from generating power plants to electrical substation. Electricity is transported over long distance at high voltages, which minimize the loss of electricity. Remember, when electricity is manufactured in a generation station, it is generated or manufactured in a very high voltage. Hence why we have our electricity generation station far from consumers. Now that electricity is then transmitted over a long distance by making use of power lines. Now, why do we have to manufacture this electricity in high voltage? It's such that it does not drop as the transmission takes place. Now, later on, we'll look at the stages of this transmission and what happens along the way. Now, the distribution system originates at the distribution station and includes the lines, poles, transformers, and other equipments needed to deliver electric power to the consumer or to the customer at the required voltage. The consumer side, it is known that only 220 volts is required out of the 132,000 volt, which is manufactured from power stations. But with the case of industries, we use 380 up to 450 volts. Now, let us look at the basic electrical reticulation network. Electricity is generated from a power station, as you can see in the picture. Now, after this electricity is being generated, it is then transmitted to the step-up transformers, as indicated here. This means that electricity is not manufactured as 132 or more volts, but it is manufactured at least at a lower voltage, known to be 11,000 volts. It then goes in the step-up transformers. This is where it is then stepped up to 132,000 volts or 230,000 volts for the purpose of transmission. As you can see, this blue section represents transmission. Now, in the transmission line, 
765, 500, 345, 230, and 138,000 volts is contained in this transmission line. Before it can reach any consumers, this voltage has to be stepped down to an acceptable value. Here, it is then stepped down to a value 11,000 volts back to the value which, which it was manufactured in. And the stepping down takes place in a sub-transmission constant or container, or rather a substation. After that, it will then be taken down to another substation where it is then stepped down to a value which is required by consumers. As you see, the secondary customer is the one that receives the required amount of voltage between 120 volts and 240 volts. Now, let us break down into pieces. How is voltage being generated or how is electricity being manufactured? Here, we'll only look at the traditional way of manufacturing electricity, which is through water and coal. Now, this is the basic concept or the basic structure of the electricity manufacturing. It begins from the water level. Here, the water is then sucked in through intake pipes. It will then drop down into a, a condenser, where the condenser will take the water through water pipes, and then it will move to a boiler. The boiler will then heat up the water to evaporation. The evaporation is normally named as steam. The steam will leave the, the boiler through the steam pipes and it, go to, it will go down to the uh, gas turbines or turbines where this will then turn at a very high speed ensuring that it turns the core of a generator. This generator will then produce current or voltage which will just transport it to a transformer. This is the step up transformer. The voltage will then move away to a breaker. The breaker ensures that the regulated voltage from the transformer is received, then away to transmission lines. Now to produce electricity, a turbine generator set converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. In the case of neutral gas, coal, nuclear fission, biomass, petroleum, geothermal and solar thermal, the heat that is produced is used to create steam, which moves the blades of the turbine. Let us talk about transmission. Here, after electricity has been created, we need to transmit it to a long distance such that it goes to the consumers. Electricity is usually shipped to a substation near a populated area. At the substation, the high voltage electricity is converted to low voltage suitable for consumer use and then shipped to the end user through relatively low voltage electricity or electric distribution lines. Distribution. Electric power from the generating station is transmitted at a high voltage to substation located in or near the city. At this substation, Voltage is stepped down to 11,000 volts with the help to step down transformers. Power is supplied to various substations for distribution or to big consumers at this voltage. As you can see, number one represents the transmission lines. Number two represents the substation where voltage is being stepped down to a required value. Number three represents a transmission line again that goes to consumers and industries, 4B, 4A, and 5B. Now, speaking of a transformer, the transformer which is required in a power station to step down and step up voltage is known as a star delta transformer. The star side of the transformer usually takes in the high voltage while the delta side is then producing the low voltage. 
132,000 volts gets in the star connection and gets out as 11,000 volts on the delta side. Any electrical network comprises of three basic stages, the generation, the transmission, and the distribution. Electricity reticulation means the trading or supply of electricity and includes all associate services. The transformer is a static device that transfers AC electrical power from one circuit to the other at the same frequency, but the voltage level is usually changed. A transformer, a transformer that increases the voltage from primary to secondary is called a step-up transformer. A transformer that decreases the voltage from primary to secondary winding is called a step-down transformer. The main reason for non-neutral conductor in a high voltage transmission line is to save on transmission cost, so the AC power is transmitted using a delta configuration. The four main types of distribution feeder system are as follows the radial feeder, the parallel feeder, the ring feeders, the meshed feeders. Radial feeders are the simplest and least expensive, both to construct for their protection devices. Ring feeders are most common in urban and industrial environments. I hope you've enjoyed this simple explanation of electrical distribution or electrical reticulation network. Hope to meet again for another session.